Welcome back to Square Off. The Maricopa County Democratic Party is in turmoil. One year before countywide offices and county board seats and much more are all up for election. What happened? What comes next? And why does it matter? Jeremy Duda of Axios Phoenix broke the story. He's a longtime reporter on Arizona politics. Welcome back to Square Off. Thanks for having me. You know, usually we don't pay attention to the parties. Uh, <laughs> Unless there's something like this. Uh, so let's start paying attention because this one's uh, kind of a doozy. The party's chairman and executive director resigned after your reporting uh, on this scandal. It started last year with questions about 100,000 mailers that were never sent out before the election. Take it from there. What kind of questions did that raise? Well, d depends on who you were talking to over there. You had uh, the chairwoman, uh, Nancy Schreiber, who was... Not, did not seem particularly keen on asking a lot of questions. You had the treasurer of the county party, Heather Morawick, who resigned uh, last month, who was asking a lot of questions that didn't get answered. Uh, what, what happened was, you know, the party wanted to send out these mailers kind of late in the election cycle, about 100,000 of them to run, you know, various parts of the county. They hired a vendor, so, you know, a consulting firm uh, they'd used for a lot of other work uh, throughout the election cycle, Agave Strategy. But what happened behind the scenes is that uh, the, the executive director of the party, Alexia Galloway, instructed Agave to use a, use a, a different company as a sub-vendor called uh, Black Printing, which happens to be owned by her fiancé. Now, this would have been a problem because they had enacted a uh, conflict of interest policy to prevent exactly this type of thing. Uh, you know, the county party had used black printing for some other work throughout the year. This was supposed to go to the executive board now for, so they can make a decision. Galloway should have recused herself under that policy. That didn't happen. They've covertly told uh, the folks at Agave Strategy, don't tell anyone who the sub-vendor is. We're uh, just to keep that quiet and, uh, you know, it all would have gone pretty well, except for one thing. The mailers never actually went out, and eventually people started to notice. And I want to pause for a second. Let's get focused on two people. And Alexia Galloway, the executive director, and Bruce Franks, who ran this printing firm. He did T-shirts, mailers, uh, and was also Julie Gungle's campaign <coughs> manager. And they were, they still are, are I guess, uh, engaged. There are questions raised about Bruce Franks going back to the election itself when he was making some good money on Julie, selling Julie Gunnigal t-shirts for the campaign. So this goes back, there were suspicions going back to last year, correct? Sure, and there have been a lot of, there's kind of been some controversy within the party. You know, they have uh, you know, supporters and enemies within the party. And so there had been a lot of folks kind of put their eyes on the two of them, especially when it comes to you know, these types of uh, business transactions with the, you know, with the party and with campaigns. And to be clear, all you've mentioned so far is a conflict of interest policy in the party that may have been violated. You did get the receipts. Galloway told the consultant, in a, one of the consultant's employees, I think, in a text, quote, just remember, don't say who your vendors are if anybody asks and don't tell us. Yeah, and uh, what uh, the folks at Agave Strategy, uh, Don Penick Thacker, is the CEO, said is that she said, "Well, I didn't know there was any you know, conflict of interest policy that had been enacted. You know, they said this was gave the impression this was really just because you know, do have enemies within the party. They didn't really want uh, to kind of draw that kind of attention to themselves. So everyone kept it quiet. So okay, so so far we got kind of an intra-party deal going on here, but there seems to be something bigger. There might might there be." criminal charges giving, given some of the things that happened, it appears, to cover up this transaction. Uh, potentially there could be, because as I mentioned, uh, everything was all good and well until people started realizing the mailers went out and they started asking questions. One of the things that uh, the treasurer uh, of the party, county party, Heather Morales, started asking is, well, where the, there should be documentation from the postal service, receipts, uh, you know, forms, records, that kind of thing that show these things went out. Uh, Agave Strategy provided those to the party. Uh, they tell me now that they got those from Black Printing document, uh, purported postal service documents that say these things went out. These, these things went out. Turns out those appear to have been falsified because obviously no mailers ever went out, and that is where you have the problem. Because once that happened, that's when the county party started asking, saying, "Hey, we want our money back. It's about twenty-four thousand five hundred dollars, you know, for a county party organization, a pretty decent amount of money, especially late in the campaign. You've probably spent most of what you've got. Uh, took a while to actually get that back. They had to do, work with uh, some folks of the state party to kind of get some advice on how to do that, but eventually they did." But everyone seems to have kind of, at least the executive director and uh, the chair, and Alexia Galloway and Nancy Schreiber, seemed strangely uninterested in kind of finding out what happened with those documents because those, had they accepted those, they would have continued paying, uh, you know, 
an, you know, a black printing, it turns out, is the sub-vendor for 20, almost $25,000 for work that never actually got completed. So the chair is out. Nancy Schreiber, Nancy Schreiber, is, yes. Schreiber resigned. Alexa, Alexia Galloway is out okay. as executive director. Uh, there are placements in their place. Are they investigating? Uh, they are. The new executive director who got appointed uh, Monday is the interim uh, executive director, uh, John Ryder, who held the position a few years ago with the county party in the past. The new uh, in acting chair is uh, Patty O'Neill, who was the uh, first vice chair. They are. There is an internal investigation going on, and what they have said is that they'll work with, their, with the county's uh, party's lawyers, and if need be, they will refer. If there's evidence of fraud, they will refer these matters to the attorney general's office and to U.S. postal inspectors. Remember, these are uh, purported uh, U.S. Postal Service documents that's potentially uh, federal issues there. They may have to refer to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Let's get and end with to the why it matters. <laughs> Again, we don't think of the parties until election time. Uh, how much damage has been done to the Maricopa County Democratic Party in terms of fundraising, raising money they'll need for mailers in 2024, getting people on board, you know, folks to do the door knocks, the phone calls, how much damage could be done? Uh, that remains to be seen. I guess it depends a lot on how much faith uh, folks are going to have in the new leadership. I mean, I think that probably helped them getting uh, Galloway and Shriver out there pretty quickly. Got to end it there. Jeremy Duda, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And that's our show for this week. Thanks very much to all of our guests. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next weekend for another round of Sunday Square Off.